I'm excited to share with you four common mistakes that people make when doing a load calculation that significantly change the results. These are design temperatures, R value, infiltration, and applying a safety factor. Let's get to it. Welcome back, I'm Chris Morin with HVAC Pro Blog, and I'm excited to share the four common mistakes that people make when doing a load calculation. The first one is design temperatures, and I'm talking about outdoor design temperatures and indoor design temperatures. These are not arbitrarily chosen based on whatever you feel like or whatever the homeowner wants. Required by code is completing a load calculation. That's in the International Residential Code at least the last two decades. What this means is that you need to use table 1A in the majority of the United States, of course 1B if you're in one of those microclimates like Hawaii or Arizona, and that is gonna determine the 99% design temperature in heating, meaning 98% of the time it's warmer than that temperature outside. If you were to choose a temperature lower than that because, hey, it might reach that one or two hours a year, you're gonna drastically oversize the system for an extreme temperature. Remember, you're already oversized 98% of the year. Now, let's talk about indoor design temperature. Those are actually defined for you in the International Energy Conservation Code. In heating, you're only allowed to design around 70 degrees indoor dry bulb, giving you a plus or minus two. So as high as 72, as low as 68. I'm sorry, that's all they give you. Of course, Cooling is where I see the majority of the problems when we talk about mistakes with load calculations. Just because a homeowner wants it to be a meat locker in their home does not mean you can design around a temperature that's an extreme inside either. We're gonna have humidity problems if you do. The required temperature to design around is 75 degree dry bulb in Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity, which is about a 63 degree wet bulb. This will provide you plenty of room for drift when it's really warm outside and the system runs constantly to try to maintain 75, but it's gonna be a little bit drier. Or when it's cooler outside, but you still need to run your air conditioner to feel comfortable and it might be a little more humid in the space. Now, number two, R value. The R value, particularly of ceilings, will drastically change your load calculation, especially in heating. This is the largest surface area for most homes. If you get this wrong by more than, let's say, three or four when it comes to an R value, you will change the load calculation and the size of the equipment that you're using. If you poke your head up into the ceiling, using an attic hatch or something like that, it's really easy to measure the depth of the insulation, know what you're looking at, and calculate an R value. Remember though, just 2% of air voids will decrease the R value in half. So you wanna make sure it's professionally installed and even across the entire ceiling. Next, when it comes to heat loss, infiltration will drastically change your load calculation. Infiltration is one of those items that most HVAC contractors do not actually measure with a blower door. So therefore, they are guessing. If you guess, and it's not an educated guess, you could change the size of the equipment easily. As an example, most new homes are semi-tight to tight. If you are saying it's looser than that, you are most likely increasing the heat loss that's needed on your load calculation and oversizing your equipment. If you're measuring CFM 50 with a blower door and you change that to ACH 50, you're able to put the actual calculation in any Manual J version eight ACA approved software. And of course, number four, adding a safety factor. I'm telling you right now, you are doing nobody a solid by rounding up to the next size. In fact, when it comes to controlling latent capacity needs, a lot of times, if you do go larger, you're gonna design around lower airflow. And sometimes people go too large and there's no way for a technician to turn that fan speed down and actually remove the moisture in the home. So don't apply a safety factor. If you do an aggressive load calculation, they have to stop the rounding somewhere. In fact, it's sometimes up to 20% oversized just on the manual J because of this. And then you're allowed to actually put in a larger piece of equipment, still abiding by ACA manual S and equipment selection. Don't do it. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, 
and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.